Okay, now let's talk about types of ciphers. We can start with uh, substitution cipher which replaces one character with another in a plain text. This cipher does not change the order of the letters in the text. So for example if you have letter Z in this case you replace it with M and if you see a letter A you replace it with N and so on. So the important thing here is to note that the location of the character stays the same however we simply replace that particular character with another so one question I have for you is is Caesar cipher a substitution cipher does the location actually change or, or does it actually st stay the same so 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000 so the answer is Caesar cipher is a substitution cipher because I mean you simply change the letter in the plain text into something else however the order actually stays the same the opposite of substitution cipher is transposition cipher in this case the letters are not really replaced the letters are not replaced instead their positions change so we keep the letters the way it is however we just move the letters around so that the original text becomes unreadable or impossible to understand in terms of its meaning so to be a little more specific here is a, an example of transposition cipher so let's say your plain text is this now is the time so we'll create this table which has cells like this so I'm going to just write down the plain text in the cells of the table like this now and O W is the time so I mean I should have more cells to fit all the letters in the table however for brevity I don't have a bigger table here one thing you need to note here is in the table for example the columns and rows we have numbers but in this case we use these numbers as our keys so it's not sequential if you take a look at the numbers so 1 3 2 instead of 1 2 3 and in this case 2 3 1 so this is what you actually decide as a key the numbers you put in here is what you decide as a key so if you use 1 2 3 and 1 2 3 for both columns and rows I mean everything stays the same so that's not encryption so that's why it's important for you to somehow change the sequence and have your key in the columns and rows so this happens to be 132 for columns and 231 for rows this happened to be my key so what happens is based on those keys now I can move these letters into new positions so for example N it says column 1 row 2 so in the new table column 1 row 2 is actually this position so I, I put N here right so as you can see the position changes right away and then the next letter O right uh, it says the key says column 3 row 2 for O so column 3 row 2 so O actually goes here what about W 
in case of W it says column 2 row still 2 right so column 2 row 2 so that's actually this one column 2 row 2 so as you can see now the letters are all in these different positions so I'm gonna finish the whole thing here uh, the next one says column 1 row 3 I goes to column 1 row 3 so column 1 row 3 is actually uh, this one so I goes here the next one says column 3 row 3 so column 3 row 3 is S and then the next one says column 2 row 3 so column 2 row 3 so that's actually where uh, T goes and then finally the last row says column 1 row 1 so that's gonna be H here and then the next one says column 3 row 1 so that's actually this one E goes E here and then finally the last one says column 2 row 1 column 2 row 1 so that's actually this one so the encrypted text becomes based on the transposition cipher this H T E and W O I T S. So I mean this is completely different from the plain text as you can see. Although we showed the two extremes of encryption approaches earlier, in real life, in the real world encryption methods used on a daily basis widely used first of all the encryption is done on bits not on letters meaning when you have a letter A that letter is represented by a number so for example so in real life lowercase a is represented by number 97 in the ASCII code standard but that number 97 is turned into a binary number which is 1100001 1100001 so when the encryption is done the encryption is done on these binary numbers so for example 1 the leading one is replaced with 0 or another 1 and so on so what you have to realize is it's really not what you see being encrypted but whatever the computer is using to represent what you're seeing that's what's being encrypted so that's one thing to remember another thing to note here is as I said to increase the complexity of your encryption although we said the substitution cipher and the transposition cipher separately they are actually used together they're mixed up or the real life cipher mixes several rounds of both substitution cipher and the transposition cipher so that's what happens in reality they are used together at the same time one after another to make the cipher stronger